G'day to you. It is 2 p.m. and you know what time it is. It is time for the lunch and learn with yours truly, Prosper Taruvinga. I would want you to know that um, this video is actually being recorded live on Facebook as we speak. So if you're catching this part, you're watching a replay of a 30 minute video that I'm going to be doing a little bit later on. So I want you to hit the number two so that we actually know who we're working with. And also it helps us to tailor our content. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, it just helps if you leave us with a comment. And I see the lunch um, segment has just tuned in. Uh, look, how's it going, my man? Hope you've been having a fantastic uh, day up there in uh, Sydney. And um, yeah, uh, today we're going to be talking about learning. And um, I've noticed the theme in some of your videos lately has been about learning, how people acquire information, how people are improving, um, you know, on themselves. So, you know, this will be particularly handy for you a little bit later on. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. For those that are not well versed with what this show is about or what it is that we're actually doing right now, um, I'd like you to know that my name is Prosper. Taruinga, and I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, um, I know that it should be profitable and you should actually enjoy working in that business. And I believe that if you're running that online business, you should also be able to create for and relate to your audience um, if you really want to make uh, some sort of money in your business. So that's the reason why um, I sit around here every single day at 2 p.m. AEST with that fail unless maybe something um, important is happening outside the office and um, we help businesses like yourself to actually grow essentially um, through digital marketing strategies and I also have three values that I run my company around that I know that everybody in their life are here to live they're here to learn and they're here to contribute, all right? So today I'm gonna to be dwelling around the learning aspect, um, you know, of, of, um, of our lives so that we all have a happier existence. Now, in order for you to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, you have to constantly be learning new things. As you would notice, the online space has changed. Maybe you used to run your business in a traditional sense, but now everything is constantly changing in front of us. You literally have to keep running in order to stand still. So I really want you to come into this video with an open mind and actually know that at the end of this video, you would have learned something new. You would have learned um, something you haven't um, quite grasped that might actually help you be to and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And like what Nicole Loins is saying, drop some nuggets today. I hope you will learn something um, new because one thing that actually stops a lot of people from prospering in their business is because they're not learning enough. Some people are just grasping um, a certain topic and then they're just taking it away and implementing that little bit um, of whatever they've grasped and then come back with feedback saying that it hasn't worked. Now, you as a person should take some sort of an audit off of yourself and figure out what is your best modality of learning? How do you learn or grasp new concepts? Um, I want you to type in the comments there um, what you think or how you actually, um, you know, gather information. Some people are visual learners. Some people are logical learners. Some people are social learners. They want to learn in a group of uh, people. That's how they grasp their information. Some people are oral learners. So basically watching videos, listening to podcasts is your way of learning. Some people are solitary learners, of which I find myself as one because I'm constantly reading new stuff. I'm constantly reading blogs, constantly writing, learning, and regurgitating all that stuff. Um you know, in order for me to grasp, um, you know, concepts that I've learned. Some people are physical learners. They actually learn by doing the certain activities. So maybe you're learning how to write or create a website or create a funnel. You actually need to learn by actually doing. And some people are verbal learners in as much as if you just, um, you know, if they say it or repeat it back, that's their modality of learning. So I want you to type in the comments there what you think your method of learning is and how do you actually grasp information or how do you, um, you know, retain whatever information that you would have 
um, gotten. Because if you do not understand how you learn, it will be difficult for you to actually understand or to actually comprehend some concepts that are happening around you. Some things that might actually help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see Chris Agha has just tuned in. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Chris is a visual learner. Okay. Visual learning, obviously, you want to see things as they are happening. Um, I should maybe um, start doing screen shares. Maybe some people would learn uh, perfectly like that. So once you know what your modality is once you know how you learn it makes it a whole lot easier for you to go to a person who's providing that information so that you can learn from them or you can actually learn in a way that actually um you know satisfies your senses you know but there's this one big thing um that a lot of people because they give up too early and um you know wh why is it that we actually assume that we should be really really good at something right from the get go you know what i mean maybe somebody comes up with a new system of of marketing or with a new system of 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 getting leads we already want to be a, an expert in that sort of modality we already want to be good at it before we even understand how it's supposed to work and before we've even given ourselves an opportunity to actually learn or grasp the concepts that are needed for that you know uh nicole says bit of all bit of all of the things i'm more a physical and a visual learner so you learn by actually doing uh the things and you know the thing about physical learners is you have to constantly be implementing so maybe that's how you learn that's that's pretty good right there and um why is it that most of us as people, we already automatically feel as if we're failures um, if we put out a new concept out there and it's not a slam dunk or it's not an outright win right from the start, you know? It seems a lot of us have forgotten that we didn't just start by walking and, and we didn't start by running. We had to crawl first. We have forgotten the most important step which is all about learning i see alison mcgrath is there thank you so much and jo jason everett thank you so much for tuning in i want you to type in the comments there what is the last thing that you actually learned and or are still learning um particularly this month this week or this um you know this year what is it that you are learning or you hope you can learn um in order to have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable because i'll tell you this some people um feel like you already have to be an expert um you know when you present yourself on the social uh, in the online space that is far from the truth that is way far from the truth you know i'll tell you a story um every friday and every sort of second wednesday of the week i go out and play um you know i go out and play basketball and um and one thing jason everett says how to fail faster um cool that's uh <laughs> that's a unique thing i think that thing was uh, made famous by Mark Zuckerberg in his philosophy um, of how he built Facebook by trying to fail fast um, and being very agile. That's pretty cool. Tell me how that will help within your business um, there, uh, Jason. Tell me how that helps you within your business to learn how to fail faster. So I'm still telling you about me going out to play basketball. And um, I saw something remarkable. I saw something really, really um, that humbled me. I recently watched a little boy who was actually teaching his father how to dribble a basketball. Do you know what I mean? The boy was... I think about eight years old or something. And it was really clear that the father had never even had a, um, held a basketball in his entire life, you know, let alone being exposed to playing basketball and dribbling and everything else, you know? So the, 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 the guy, you could tell the way he was bouncing the ball, it was all above the knee. He was throwing the ball in, in weird ways. And, um, you know, with, with a few wobbly bounces, he kept, you know, letting the ball out of the court. And then the little boy held the ball to his father and he's like, dad, like this, do it lower on the ground. And then he passed the ball to the, to his dad, you know, and then he's like, dad, try bending your elbows and your, your knees a little bit more, you know, and the guy still was being weird about, um, you know, playing the basketball there. But guess what? It seemed like a really tender father and son moment, you know what I mean? And and then, you know, you would really admire the dad because they is learning something from his own son. 
you know what I mean? Some people would never want to be taught anything by anyone younger than they are because they're already anticipating that I'm grown up, I'm the expert, I should know better, I have authority, you know? You know? And you should admire the father in this story because he and his son were in the courtyard in a public area, you know? So he had no shame or even some sort of embarrassment that this young man was actually teaching him a simple skill. So there was a lot of humility in him and he was just learning. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was so beautiful to see, you know, because some of us actually anticipate that no one can teach you anything different. You know, some people see this video or they see somebody who, who, who knows a thing or two about something they want to learn, but they quickly dismiss them just because maybe they think they don't have skin in the game, etc., etc. Do you know what I mean? You know, you, you might have, um, you might have experience in your, your, your industry. You might be well known, but one day you're going to need to learn somebody, some, something from somebody and it has to be something new. Uh, Jason Everett says, every time I try something new and if it succeeds or fail, I can learn, change and improve. My job is to test and measure, not to get it perfect. Um, it either works or not. Don't get attached to the outcome. Okay, that's pretty cool. And Jason also says, my greatest teachers are my boys age one and four. Absolutely. I've got one. Um, I've got a girl who is in between the ages of your boys. Uh, and I call her three major in as much as she's three going on 16. Um, you know, she, she's always learning new things. And whenever she learns something or how to do certain things like, you know, you know, change channels on a remote, she wants me to sit down and so she can show me what she's learned. So how many, um, you know, things are you letting go or are you not learning just because you are not, um, you know, just because you, you, you're, you're, you're underestimating the capabilities of the people that are around you that can teach you certain lessons. You know, what I'm talking about today is called reverse mentoring. All right. You might be big. You might know all these certain things about your industry, but there's somebody who was brought up around social media. There's somebody who lives and breeds social media or somebody who lives and breeds website creation, etc., etc. Have you been open minded enough to learn from people that are around you? You know, the lesson here is most of us, we think we are, maybe we are grown up or we're an expert or we are the authority figure within what we're doing or, or whatever niche we're in. And, 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 and we, we are used to us being the answer to everything that anybody might have and knowing our stuff inside out. And we have got not that much willingness to learn, um, you know, things that come easy to other people. Do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, when, when you, when you, when you reach people like that, you, you can tell they have a problem within their business. Maybe their blog is not converting. Maybe their website is not converting. And if you ask them, you, they'll be like, yeah, but I don't know anything about that. And I'm like, have you asked the people that are around you that can actually teach you a thing or two? Why? Because they were born in a time when social media was a thing. Do you know what I mean? Most of the kids that we have around us, they, they don't even know that when we grew up, there was one telephone in the whole house and one computer in one room that was called the computer room. You know, they just grew up and everything was at their fingertips. So you can actually tap into that expertise. They already know where the youth or where the people around their generation is, is and are putting their attention on. Do you know what I mean? So never underestimate the people that we have around us that might know a thing or two about what it is that we're trying to grasp. We've got kids, we've got nephews, we've got cousins. Put them to work. Let them show you how they're doing it already because we, I know of kids that are already, you know, champions on YouTube. I know of kids that are already, um, you know, uh, on on. On, on, uh, what do you call this? Um, you know, small apps that they're creating. They're already video ready. They already know how to get leads. They already know how to get followers. They already know how to actually reach a target audience. Are you tapping into those resources? You know, because you might spend the rest of your day trying to learn how to actually put out a blog, how to actually put out a YouTube video or how to go live like this. When you've got kids or people that are around you that are younger, that can reverse mentor you in order for you to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. 
What's, what, what's the benefit of you having a 15 um, you know, um, year old business while you also have a 16 year old who is just probably playing games that you can take advantage of and they can actually show you the ropes on how to be online? You know, uh, Nicole says, always be closing. I don't know how that connects with what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about how you can actually take advantage of the people that are around us. Because most of the people that we talk to, they say, yeah, I've already been working in my field for 15 years. I don't have to start all over. I'm not saying you can, you have to start all over. Just tap into the resources of the people that are around you that can teach you and work with you, you know? And some people would say, oh, that means I'd have to go back to school in order to learn, you know, certain things about the online space. But it doesn't have to be like that, you know? And, and the fact that you're an expert, if you're an expert on your own website and nobody's seeing it, what good is it anyway? What good would it be if nobody actually sees the stuff that you're putting out there? You know? I mean, of course, you could be good at what you're doing and, and, and good at the things that you pursue, but you can't have, you know, you can't know everything. And most lessons are really expensive lessons, so why not utilize the resources you have around yourself? You know? But getting there requires the willingness to take off that first shaky step, you know, even if it means when you uh, with you starting to, to with the basics, maybe looking stupid, you know, asking dumb questions, learn from somebody who is much younger than yourself. Like that eight year old was teaching his dad how to dribble in a basketball, you know. So because these people are on the ground, they already know what their age group and age range is, is looking for. Sit down with them over coffee or something instead of just yelling at them. Learn from them. Do you know what I mean? Because half of these things that we're trying to attempt already comes, it, it already comes natural to them. So when you're attempting something new, whether you're starting your own business, you know, making a career change or whatever the heck, you know, even learning to dribble a basketball, like I was saying, it puts you in a vulnerable position um, to having to learn something new. We all don't know everything. And if, if you are of the notion that you already know it all, then you're heading nowhere really, really fast. You know, be always learning. At the end of the day, ask yourself, have I learned anything new today? Who have I learned it from? How am I going to implement that lesson that I've learned? You know? And uh, Chris says, even though I didn't grow up with social media, I'm helping others older than myself set up their accounts and how to use them. Absolutely. A lot of traditional businesses are failing just because they are too rigid and they're too proud to want to learn something from somebody younger than they are. You know, so figure out how you can continuously put stuff out there to teach others if that's your way of learning. So that's the reason why I asked earlier on, what is the modality that actually helps you learn and, 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 and get new concepts? You know, so you literally have to, you know, embrace your inner amateur because you got to start somewhere. Nobody, nobody started off knowing how to walk. Everybody wobbles. Everybody crawls, you know. And the part that, you know, that, that you'll be trying to, to get better is the more you, you learn. Because half of the time you would notice that the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know a lot of things. You know? And having to embrace that you don't know a lot, it takes guts. So figure out where you can learn these things from. Maybe you can learn from books. Maybe you can learn from those people that are around you. You know? Especially when it's likely that you, you, you actually suck at whatever it is that you're learning. Because some people give up too quickly um, when in actual fact we have the help that we actually need and the resources that we actually need. I think it was Tony Robbins that says it's not the lack of resources that affects people. It's the lack of resourcefulness. You know, instead of you, you know, when, you know, yelling at the kids or, you know, just making you know letting them go away and play video games why don't you utilize their young brains and and use them as test subjects or use them as um, launch pads to see if they can help you figure out what's new on the market you know and constantly be trying again and the good news is when you become an amateur it's only temporary because if you do something long enough you will soon become an expert in it you know i mean kind of i mean it's not like but if you really, really suck at it, then I'm sorry. But, you know, you learn a little about something 
you know, and, and, and you constantly, you know, gather that information and suddenly you become less of an amateur, you know, and then you just keep working at it. You just keep plugging away and making sure that whatever you do, you are constantly learning and you then become a pro because some of us are putting out mediocre content out there just because we are refusing to learn, you know? And when you keep working at it, when you keep, you know, you will start noticing that, oh, this is how I can do certain things. And you can really hone your skills and put them all together. And maybe eventually you start reaching a level of mastery. And I see Greg Staden has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. All right. I mean, eventually, though, you'd want to try something new, you know, um, you know, every single time just so you can expand your skill set. You know, some of the reasons why we're not making money is because we're too rigid in what we know. We're not wanting to learn extra things that could bring in more income. You know, so what new thing are you going to be learning this week? You need to really, you know, hone in on the skills that you have and then expand your skill set. You know, I mean, once again, you... You'll become an amateur in yet another new domain. But the more you are learning, you just need to embrace it. You know? And if you find that, you know, your willingness to embrace it is, is, is getting bigger and bigger, the more you learn, the more you actually expand and the more income you actually start making and your business becomes profitable and actually, um, you know, enjoyable. So maybe... You need to figure out how are you actually learning, what modalities are those, and it makes it a whole lot easier for you, um, you know, to, to then expand in your business. Because right now, you might have a client that speaks Spanish or French. If you could have learned Spanish three years ago, wouldn't you be in a position to have spoken to that person? Or would, if, if you had learned about investing while you were still in your 20s, um, you know, wouldn't you be in a better position financially right now? So find out what do you need to learn to become a better person. And half the time, you also need to not close off, um, you know, you know, other people that have a greater expertise than you actually do have. And figure out how can you get a reverse mentor, somebody who's younger than you, who probably knows a thing or two about the thing that you're trying to learn and also teach them something of what you are actually aware of. And I see Helen has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Troy Holder says, hey, all professionals, we're once beginners. Absolutely. You got to start somewhere. But some of us want to start off with a home run already, you know. And for many of us, there are more things we want to learn than we actually have time for. So, you know, and, and, and the way things are changing these days, I keep saying you literally have to run fast in order to stand still. Social media is changing. You know, algorithms are changing with different, um, you know, platforms. Websites are all changing. I, somebody says you don't need one. Somebody says you need one. All of those things, we need to be learning them in order to function properly, in order to not be overwhelmed. But as information becomes more readily accessible online, you know, um, you know the, the number of things that we need to learn has actually increased. And that means the only variable that we can actually control is the time we spent on learning them. So figure out who around you can get you faster, cheaper, better, faster in order to learn all those things that you got to learn. And Chris says... Things are changing even faster. <laughs> Absolutely. So some of us want to shorten the learning curve. Um, maybe, you know, and, and that's how some, some people online are making a lot of money. You know, how to shorten the learning curve. You know, and, and this, is, this is something that, you know, some of us have become, you know, open to in, in order to learn things cheaper, better, faster. But are we really learning if we're just looking at what other people have done and not implementing? So figure out how do you best learn uh, core principles of a certain modality or how do, you, how do you actually learn yourself? Like I said earlier on, some people are visual learners, some people are logical, some people are verbal, some people are oral. You really got to figure out where do you stand in all of this, you know? And when you've got everything in place, you could leverage them and push yourself and learn more things, master many categories and once you have that in place, your business, business skills or maybe your, 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 your use of technology would actually make you 
profitable and you can actually start enjoying your work because the more you know what you're supposed to be doing, the more you know how to get results, the more fulfilling any job can actually then become. So I want you to type in the comments there, what are you going to be learning this week that would actually change your bottom line or change the way you've been doing business um, so far? Because, um, I mean, still quoting uh, Tony Robbins in his book, uh, Mastery, Money, the Mastery Game, he says that, one skill you really want to master in this day and age that we live in is if you want to have an extraordinary life, you have to have the ability to learn rapidly. All right. Now, Helen wants to learn how to podcast. Is it learning how to podcast or how to actually put out a podcast or how to interview people within a podcast? That's um that's an interesting topic because a lot of people are, are geared towards voice and how to learn how to do um you know alexa skills how to podcast and how to put out your content um you know verbally so that other people can learn from you so that's that's a good that's a good thing to be putting out there that you need to be learning so um you know let me know is it is it how to start a podcast or is it how to maintain it or how to market a podcast because you don't really need to reinvent the wheel most of the things that we need to learn in order to be doing and have businesses that are profitable, right? Are already out there. You just need to choose who to learn it from. Helen says to do my own, to be recognized as an expert. That's pretty good because the more you, you help other people by actually helping um, them is, is the only way that others can actually either learn from you and take you on as an expert. So um, it is something that maybe if you want us to have a chat about, I've been doing this um, videos and podcasting ever since they sort of were in inception. So if you want to bounce off ideas of what you might have, yeah, just send me a message there, Helen, and then we can have a chat and see where you are um, pertaining to that aspect. Because, you know, like I said, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, the common tendency uh, we all have when learning something new is to try and master it alone and, and underestimate the amount of time and effort that, you know, you can save by getting help from somebody who's already learned it. You know what I mean? And Christine, uh, Chris says, Helen, create one and invite others that are already good at their craft so they can get to learn from them as well. Absolutely. I mean, think back to the time when you had to maybe learn something new, like learn a new language or obtain a new skill. You probably, you know, had a steep learning curve initially, right? But after a few years or even months, of you know just experimenting with what you 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 had in front of you and making those mistakes because it is in the making of those mistakes that we actually learn a, a great deal so you know stop trying to design a shortcut um you know in order for you to actually master something that would actually help you be do and have you know there's a lot of people that have um sort of gotten um things that uh you know we're we're, we're looking for you know, half of the time you can either get, I mean, just to reiterate what I, what I was talking about today and to, you know, make sure that it actually makes sense. Um, do you know what I mean? When, when, to, to actually hack learning is constantly, you have to be doing it all the time. Our brains can contain so much more information than we think uh, they possibly can. So don't be lazy in trying to expand your brain and expand your skill set in, 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 in whatever it is that you are well versed in right now. Find somebody you can learn from, preferably somebody younger that you can reverse mentor in exchange. Do you know what I mean? Or somebody who's been where you want to be, especially somebody who has results. Or you can actually just model an expert, you know, somebody who's been there and don't try and reinvent the wheel. That's the reason why people fail because they're trying to do things that they haven't done before and not wanting to learn. They just want quicker, better, faster results without having done anything. And just deconstruct the skills that you have because I don't know if you're familiar with the Pareto principle. 20% of what you do constitutes 80% of the results that you do. So figure out what 20% are you well versed with? What do you actually know that will give you the majority of the results that you're looking for? And one other thing is once you start learning, stop trying to multitask. Learn something, focus, keep at it up until you know a thing or two about it and then move on to the next thing. The one thing that a lot of people do is they try and dabble into a lot of things and then poof, 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 you know, um, uh, with quick math, they then don't get the results that they actually are anticipating, you know what I mean? So 
at the end of the day, just don't do six, um, you know, sit ups and then start checking for abs. It does take 21 years to be 21 years old and just practice, practice, practice whatever you learn and seek immediate feedback because you're, how are you going to know you're heading the right direction if you're not actually doing the things that you're supposed to be learning and just go long, try and keep at it. Try and stay with whatever you're going to be doing. Don't quit before you've actually, um, you know, seen the results. Because with everything that you're learning, you're going to face what is called the deep, right? You're, you're, you're changing habits. It does take over 21 days for you to actually change a habit. So give yourself patience, allow yourself to fail. And then the more you learn, the more you are expanding your skill set, your skill base, it will then maybe one day culminate in yet another stream of income that you can, um, you know, take advantage of. So take stock of who you are today, what you need to learn, what you need to do in order to be that person that is learning those lessons, the people that you need in order to actually start being, um, you know, a, a, a good student. Because if you're not learning, then you're not growing. And if you're not growing, then you're dying. And if you're dead, then what else is there? I hope this was a very good learning curve for you in order to actually take stock of how you learn, what you need to learn and how to actually do it and use the resources around you to constantly be growing, to constantly be agile. Because these days, if you're not growing, then you're dying. And we get motivated by growth, seeing results. So the more you learn, the more you earn. Um, hopefully this has been really, really good for you. And if you've been lazy about learning something new, you would um, you know, actually, um, you know, start looking at what's around you and how you can actually deconstruct the skills you already have in order to see how to get the 80% of the results you currently are having. And if you want to learn something new, let's have a chat. Let's see what you're doing. Like what Helen has said, she's learning to do a podcast. I'm more than happy to help you out and see how it all works out. Thank you so much for learning with me. Um, it's no longer about teaching. It's all about us, um, you know, learning together. And Troy Holder says, thanks for sharing another valuable episode. It is things that are happening in and around us. We're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. I've just done my part. Hope you're going to do your part too. Thank you so much, guys. Bye for now.